Okay, Psalms 53, a repeat of Psalms 14. So it must be important when God repeats something. It's kind of funny because we make a big deal about the birth of Jesus Christ and it's only mentioned once in four Gospels. And we have two Psalms here identical. Where are the priorities of God? Not in birthdays, I guess. What day was da what day was David born on? Jeremiah. Adam. What day was Moses born on? I mean, he was born and his mother took care of him for, for five or six months. Then she put him in a little basket and floated him down the Nile River. And the princess came and found him. And she opened up and he started crying. And he was a ruler of the, of the of the Egyptians became mighty in power of the Egyptians, the way of the Egyptians, and he did not take the entertainment of the world, but he went and sought his people, and he killed the man, and he went and found a man and dwelt with him, and, and was given a, a, a one of his daughters to be. His, and Joseph, you know, his brother took a coat, dipped it in blood, told their father, uh, you know, Joseph is dead. The animals got him. Joseph went to Egypt. He worked with Potiphar. Potiphar had a wife. Her, his wife had her eyes for, for Joseph. Joseph escaped up, ended up in jail, sat in jail with a baker and and and, and uh, with the, the wine, the cupbearer of Pharaoh. And they had dreams. And then Pharaoh had a dream. And then the birth of Jesus. And they came into the city of David, Bethlehem. There was no room for them at the end. And then it came time for Mary to give birth. She gave birth, wrapped the kid and swallowing claws and put him in a manger and the angels went forth into the to the shepherds nearby and said behold said unto him that's not saying you know we put great detail on birthdays well there's only one birthday that's the day you were born and you can mark how many years you are but how can we never celebrate for a Christian? How can we never celebrate the new birth date? You must be born again, Jesus said. And we say, you know, you got to have the new birth. You got to have the new birth. You know, if you're born once, you die twice. If you're born twice, you die once. And then you celebrate your birth of being a sinner, but you don't celebrate the birth of being saved. What's going on here? Tell me. We have this verse, we have this song, it is repeated. Must be important. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So every atheist that proclaims there's no God is a fool. That's not true. What's the verse say? Yeah, what does the verse say? The fool has said in his heart. That there's no God. In a public ministry, I beat people go, Hail Satan! Satan rules! You don't believe that in your heart. You're just saying, just try to get me. You're trying to get me upset. You're trying to get me to run away from the public ministry. You don't really believe that. Because if you believe it, all right, the atheist, there is no God. Satan rules. Well, isn't Satan a God? Small g. You can't be an atheist and worship the devil because the devil's a god. But the verse says, the fool has said in his heart that there's no, he's got to believe with the, with the heart man believes in the righteousness of God. With the heart, the fool says there is no God. I dealt with one guy one time. He goes, I'm an atheist. Okay. I question him. I question him. And at the end of the conversation, I think maybe an hour of that, something like that. I don't remember. I said, well, let me ask you a question. And he didn't get saved, but let me ask you a question. Are you still an atheist? He goes, well, no, I don't know. You don't know. Well, we started this conversation off, you were an atheist. You don't know. Yeah. You know what we call that? No. I said, that's an agnostic. An agnostic is someone who doesn't know. Seriously, I don't know if there's a God. I don't know if there isn't a God. I, I dealt with another man like that one time at the farmer's market. I got in a good conversation with because... He didn't say there's no God. He didn't say there was God, but he listened.
And you got to realize, you, you got to drill. You can't just say, you know, you can't go out and say, are you saved? And they say, yes. Okay. Have a good day. Catholics. I grew up Catholic. If you ask a Catholic, are you saved? They're going to say yes. And they'll die and go to hell by the authority of the Pope and the tradition of the Catholic Church and not know what Jesus Christ has done for them. Because the uh, Catholic is saved. A Catholic is saved when he eats Jesus' body and drinks his little blood called the Mass or the rest of the sacrament. And when a man comes in, oh, I don't believe in God, question him. Find out. Because a lot of times they'll just give you an excuse to make you go home. But if they do corrupt, rotted, rusted, no good, failing, are they that say that there's no God in their heart and have done abominable iniquity? Not just iniquity, abominable. What's the abominable? There's no God. And I believe it. That's an abomination. Better be careful what you say about, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm going to say I'm an atheist. I don't know where I'm going to get that from, but I'm going to tell that preacher, man, that, that evangel, I'm, I'm an atheist. You better be careful because the Bible says an atheist from his heart is an abomination of iniquity. You better crack that guy out because if he's not an atheist, you better at least get him an acknowledgement work. Okay, God, I'm sorry I said I was an atheist. I don't know what really I am. <laughs> he says agnostic. I, I, you know, the Lord can work with that. But you send a guy out, I'm an atheist, Satan rules. Okay. Idiot. You have no deal to deal with that guy. That guy's walking away. It's an abomination. Where he may not be an atheist. A lot of times I found out they're not atheists. It's, and when you ask them at the end, of the, say, can I just ask you a question? I just, just want to ask you a little question. Yes. Do you really believe what you, well, how we started this conversation? Be like, what? How, <laughs> you said you were an atheist. Now let me give you the depth. Atheist says that there is no God. An agnostic is a man that says, I don't know. <laughs> And a lot of times at the end of that conversation, if they don't get saved, they'll be like, I guess I'm not an atheist. And a lot of times, I, what I've dealt personally is, I don't know. You know what you did? You got them out from an abominable iniquity to, I don't know. And if you planted seeds, well, someone's going to come along, hopefully, and water those seeds. You leave them just as an atheist or I'm saved and they have no... Listen, they're today, churches today, they just say this prayer. I'm saved. You got to question them. You got to drill them. There is none that doeth good. And that's found in Romans 10, 9. Romans 3, 10. And then that's another one. Public ministry. I'll be preaching... Gospel, hell, heaven, Jesus, devil, work, church cancer, whatever I'm preaching. It's the same thing every week, just different order. Somebody somebody will come up to me within at least once a month. I'm good. Uh, there is none that doeth good. So you're violating the scripture. What do you mean? You said you're good and the Bible says there is none that doeth good. Now, what is good? Oh, their good is not as my good, as my good is not as good as a man who is in prison's good, as much as the man in the White House, uh, whoever's in the White House. I don't mean just president. Every person that works in the White House, their good is not as, as my good. And the man that has a used car lot, his good is not as good as the teacher in the, in the classroom's good. And a police officer's good is not as good as... The tax collector is good. And you say, well, with all this good, where do you get good from? What the Bible says is good. And when you say, well, I'm good, okay, let's look at the Ten Commandments and let's see how good you are. You know what they mean? Well, I'm good. I, 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 don't, I have never killed anybody. I'm not as bad as you. 
You know, you're sitting here yelling at all these people. You're upsetting the people. I wouldn't do that. I let my light shine. And then how many people are going to hell because you won't say nothing? That's not good. Have you never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? That's not good. If you're going to die and go to hell, you're not good. And if you're saved and you find yourself with gold, silver, and precious stuff, that's not good. That's not your good. What are you saying? Stuff? That's God's good. That's Jesus. We get those rewards only by Jesus, only by God working in us. I didn't save them. God just said, just open up your mouth and I'll fill it. Not be, uh, you know, you just don't open your mouth and, and God, I, I've got, I've had God fill my mouth with the Holy Spirit. I guess you're not praying. I've been filled with the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit use my mouth and I'm telling you. God looked down from heaven. God has to look down upon man because God is higher than man. You know, there's one animal that can't look up. Or maybe two. The sheep and the pig. Pigs can't look up. Sheep, you have to probably roll them over to get them to look up. We're supposed to look up. God looks down. And many places in the Bible, God had to look down. When they're building that tower, God looked down and said, we got to go down there and figure out what's going on down there. God looked down upon the children of men. Uh-oh. They've got God's intention. To see if there were any that did understand. Understand in the Bible, in most cases, is your relationship to God. You know something. And you take what you know and apply it. That's wisdom. And when you take what you know and your wisdom. Okay. I know how to drive a car. I take my car and I go pick up people for church. They hear the, they hear the word of God preach and talk. I am using the wisdom of how to drive a car. How to use a car to bring people to the Lord. I know how to speak semi-correctly know how to speak English and I have used my my speech to preach the gospel for the Lord God said I want to I want to see that anybody understand me that did seek God that verse right there everybody know everybody seeks God and you know what you just told me what what did I tell you you don't have no public ministry at all you have never been yelled at by a lost man. Taking people away. That's not what Jesus would do. He's flying across the street, some guy told me last week. He has to be doing that. I wish you'd shut up. That's not what the Bible. And I was going to say to you, you know what the Bible says. You never studied the Bible because I'm doing exactly what Jesus and the apostles did. Listen, if they were seeking God, God would be found. God has to send the Holy Spirit out to draw them. Man seeks a small G-O-D. I want a God that will agree with my sins. But his sins are bad. Mine? No, mine are not bad at all. That's why they come up to you and say, I'm good. Good to what? In the eyes of God, you're good for nothing. I'm not good. Well, you're here every week and you preach. Sometimes I go into my own flesh. I don't go in the spirit of God. Sometimes I get angry. Sometimes when I preach, I'm sinning. That ain't good. That that music, that DJ gets me going, get, gets my feathers ruffled and my fur up. And, I, and that ain't good. God's not appreciating that. Everyone, with the exception of me, no. Every one of them is gone back. Romans 3.12. There's none righteous, no, not one. I've been looking for God. 
And why haven't you found them? Are you telling me that God is so impowerful that he cannot? Oh, there's one right there. I'll go get him right now. No, the Holy Spirit's got to draw you. Okay, you may have a, a search for God, but the Holy Spirit's got to show you who God is. Listen, there are many times as a little Catholic little boy I was, and I get in trouble, I go running to the Catholic church at the Catholic altar with a Catholic candle, and, you know, there's a God, and, and well, how come I didn't get saved in 1987? How come during 1987, I don't know how many years, how many months, but in April 1970, my grandma would say, come to church, come to church, come to church. Say, shut up, shut up, shut up. If I was really searching for God, let's go, get in the car. Well, it's not church day. <laughs> well, let's go anyway. If I was seeking God. If, if people were seeking God, I wouldn't have to start preaching on the street. They'd be coming up to me with a line. My church goes knocking on doors. If they were seeking on God, seeking for God, they would open up their door, they would put a chair outside their front door, and they would wait for the preacher to come and say, Hi, I was waiting for you to come so I can get saved. And I think if you were to talk to my preacher, I don't think, maybe once, I don't know, but I think the odds would be anybody who's knocking on door, they have not been sitting there at their door waiting for you. I know it's certainly that when you go knocking on doors and you park your car and wherever you park it, I guarantee none of those people come and running out to your car to get saved. Cornelius needed the angel to come and say, go get Peter. And Cornelius was your typical Catholic. Read it. Acts chapter 10. The Ethiopian eunuch in his chariot. He just came from Jerusalem. Why didn't he find God? Why did God have to send Philip? You would think he's reading Isaiah. You think he would turn the chariot around with Isaiah 53 and run back to the priest and say, well, who's this Jesus? You mean to tell me that it wasn't that many years after Jesus suffered and died, and was buried, and rose again for the third day. It wasn't that many years that, that, that Ethiopia would not be able to find somebody if he was searching God out to find somebody. Let me, I heard about this man who, who came from back to life. No, he's heading back to Ethiopia again. God says, Philip, go get him. And then the Holy Spirit draws them. Now, there may be some people out there who are actually trying to find God and looking for God. But uh, it's rarity because you find God. We got the world of the internet today. What must I do to be born again? In King James Bible, six, Acts 16.31. I hope that would come up in the internet next church. Every one of them has gone back, backwards. They're going the wrong way. They're in reverse. They, everyone, are all together become filthy. They're getting dirtier and filthier. They're not looking for God. They're getting more into sin. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. That comes from Romans. I love that verse, the quote, because there is none that doeth good. Well, no. God's already put there. David already put there. Paul already puts there. That I'm going to tell you you're no good. And you go, well, wait, no, no, you're not. No, not one. Oh, I'm good. Well, you're not good. Yes, I know you're not. There it is. No, it's not. There's the argument verse right there. Somebody, oh, I'm good. No, uh, oh, no, no, you're not. No, God said, no, you're not. No, not one. How dare you say it? I didn't say it. God said it. David wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to tell him, no, not you. I love that argument. Have the workers of iniquity. Ooh. So what do workers of iniquity get? The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I hope you people are still listening. I mean, you probably turned off when I started talking about birthdays and you're missing a great message. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge? 
Now, let me ask you for a minute. At the workers, Nick, we have no knowledge. Again, I'm, I, I'm writing a book about the Bible. I'm using the Bible. And I've written short stories. I've done poems. And I took in a class, certificate class. And one of the first things they taught me, I forget how long, I wasn't in very the class very long before they taught me. You write what you know. If you're going to write about something that you don't know, you better study that subject and find out to know so you can write. All right? So I'm going to talk about what I know. I'm at Daytona Beach, Florida. I go, try to go every Saturday to the farmer's market. There are people who are not saved and there are people who are saved. The ones that are unsaved that give me the hard time and all that, do they have knowledge? You better believe they have knowledge. And I got a testimony by them that they have the knowledge of God because the preacher preaches to them. I had one time for a while, there was, there was a group of people there setting up vendors. And as we're setting up, they would quote to me John 3.16. And correctly, mind you. They can never tell God we never knew. Not when you can quote John 3.16 as a lost man. And you can't say, well, I have no knowledge. Well, here comes that preacher, man. He's going to preach Jesus. I heard him say it. That man's going to just talk Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I heard him say it. There are lost people out there who have the knowledge of God, who have heard and have been taught by other Christians that you need to be saved, that Jesus is the way. You need to turn. They know. And they're still in their sin. Who eat up my people as they eat bread. That would be a reference to the Antichrist. But my people that David's speaking about is the children of Israel. And I've taught you that, that the Roman sacrament, the Catholic sacrament, and Luther's, is going to go literal in the tribulation. See, right now when they say, this is the body of Jesus, it is, they will tell you, ask a Catholic. Is that the literal body of Jesus? They will say yes. Is that the literal blood of Jesus? They will tell you yes. What they are proclaiming, they are saying, is they eat and drink a little Jewish body. I think it's John 1 11. He came unto his own, his own received him not. You trace the lineage of Mary. She goes all the way back to, to Adam, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Joseph, the adopted father of Jesus. Traces his lineage all the way back to King David, Jewish. So the Catholic Church today and the Lutheran Church proclaim to eat and drink Jewish body and Jewish blood. And when they are sacrificing and beheading Jews in the tribulation period, well, they're going to take up those bodies and they're going to eat those bodies and they're going to drink that blood. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. They have not called upon God. They're not seeking. God says, is there any that seek after me? He says, no, they, they, none are called upon God. Now, there are people who got saved, and they, and they somehow, you know, before they got saved, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need you. And then the Lord sends out that light. Maybe as a little boy, when I went to the Catholic Church, in trouble, and not the Catholic Church, but went to God, Hey guys, you know, I'll just show them a little light. I mean, a little light was for me with a Catholic growing up Catholic was I could never understand that that on the Roman Easter, well, Good Friday, the Roman Good Friday was Jesus died on the cross, okay? This is Roman tradition, this is not Bible. And then on Easter he rose from the grave. That's Roman tradition, not Bible. But this is what I was taught. And I always would look up and say, wait a minute. If Jesus Christ risen with the Easter bunny or whatever that nonsense. And I go to church 52 weeks with my grandpa, which I did. And I look above the priest's head and I see Jesus still to, nailed to the cross. Well, I would say to myself, well, how did he raise? I thought as a little boy that Jesus Christ came out of that tomb and went back and went nailed to the cross. Well, that's a heresy speaking in the book of Hebrews. And maybe the God gave me that little light to say, hey, there's a little confusion right there, isn't it? Yeah. What's the truth, Lord? 
I'll show you 1987. You're going to fool around for a little while. You're not going to be so good. You're going to be on right. I'll let you just build up enough pain and sorrow that when you're ready to come to me, I'll save you. I remember as a little boy, I, I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, give me a wife. God answered that. Two of them. I'm looking for a third one. I pray as a little boy. I didn't know it was in the book of Proverbs chapter 3. So, Lord, I, when I grow up, I always want to have just enough. As a little boy, I don't want I don't want too much. I don't want too little. I didn't know that was in the book of Proverbs. And that's still my prayer. God's holding faithful to it. Was I seeking God? Evidently not good enough because I didn't get saved until I was 18 years old. You trying to tell me if 10 years old, 11, if I was really seeking God, God would turn his back on me for eight to seven years? I don't think so. I must not have been searching. There were they in great fear, where no fear was, anxiety. There it is. When you panic because there's nothing to panic about. And a lot of your panic is nothing to be panicked because what we panic about usually never happens. For God has scattered the bones of him that it can't that it can't against thee. Knows the him. I thought we were talking about everyone. We've taken another step in Psalm 53. We're looking at the Antichrist. Who's going to say in his heart that there's no God in heaven? The Antichrist. What's the Antichrist going to say? It's me. I'm the Messiah. I am the God. That's the, most, that's the Antichrist, not me saying that. The Antichrist, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, has never sought God. Ever. God looks down. He's going to look down tribulation period and say, yep. Not even asking for me. It's going to take the last three and a half years for those Jews to say, Lord, uh, uh, Jehovah, we need help. Thou hast put them to shame, and he will put the Antichrist to shame, and all the enemies of Israel. Because God has dispersed them. I mean, excuse me, despised them. How do you know that's the Antichrist? How do you know it, it's the tribulation passage? Look at verse 6. Oh, that salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. There's Jesus coming, second advent. There it is. That's when Jesus Christ is on the white horse, and you got King of Kings and Lord of Lords with the army of us Christians right behind him. After we just picked up the Jews in probably Salem Petra. We're coming to triumphal entry, not on an ass, but on a horse. Everybody crying, Hosanna in the highest. Here is the Messiah. When God bringeth back the captivity, tribulation, of his people, who are his people? Jacob shall rejoice in Israel, shall be glad. When is that? That's the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. You know what the Antichrist is going to say? There's no God. And the Antichrist is going to believe that beyond a shadow of a doubt. <clears throat> so, if you find somewhere, somebody out there who truly believes in their heart that there's no God, he's following stoop with the Antichrist. And there's no good in them at all. 